And heaters also being so critical, um, uh, they also cause a lot of problems, don't they? Yeah, it's it's one of the the, the biggest uh, failure points, unfortunately, uh, with uh, catastrophic consequences. Oof. Um, yeah, because too cold or too hot. Yeah, it really yeah. It, it, it it it's such a critical um, component to what we're doing to so, the survival of these animals. Okay. All right. So what's the story with the heaters? I mean, uh, heaters, I'm assuming, you know what? I, I've done this for almost 30 years. And I remember back in the day, heaters have their own thermostat in there and you could set the heater temperature and all that. So is that, yeah. is that still true? Yeah. yeah. And, and those are still out on the market, Carlos. And, and, and basically it's, it has a little thermostat inside of the heater and you'll see a little dial on it. Mm -hmm. uh, the biggest problem with those is the, the constant uh, on off, on off, on off. This cycle, it just wears down these little relays. I mean, you got to think about it. some of these little heaters are, are 20, $30. It's just, it's a really yeah. inexpensive uh, piece of equipment that you're relying on this built in thermostat in these uh, heaters. So okay. it, 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 yeah, it's really, uh, and then now you have uh, these heater elements uh, on the market that have no thermostat. So, so how do you control that? Right, and that's what that's what that's what it seems to be the issue is that at the beginning, you know, everybody came out with the heater and it has the thermostat in there, and it has a little you know uh, switch on and off and off, and that ended up wearing out, and yeah. then it would when it wears out, it locks into a position whether it's hmm. if you're lucky it locks into an off position if you're right. unlucky it locks into an on position well you mm -hmm. know lucky and lucky depends on where you're at so right. as time went by the companies started to think it's like okay i don't want to rely on this tiny little 20 dollar you know mm -hmm. uh, relay so let me just sell the element so the big retail stores they started to sell just the element which then could be connected to what at the time was becoming a big trend which was an aquarium controller so mm. now you have this this aquarium this heater element which is just a rod with a wire with an ac plug in it and then you were supposed yeah. to grab this into a um uh, a smart power strip and mm. then plug it in there and then the controller, the aquarium controller would sense the temperature, tell the power strip to turn on or turn off. And that seemed to work, or at least in our heads, we were like, okay, that seems to be better. Now I have a, an aquarium controller and a power strip that are way more expensive and more reliable. So I don't need this tiny little relay. And then people started to figure out that an aquarium controller is failing and leaving us with the same exact issue, which is sometimes the heater would remain on or would remain off. So the problem kind of didn't go away. The problem just kind of, we just try to kick the can, but ended up in the same spot. Yeah. All right. So now today, now that we figured out that that didn't work, now today's trend is a little different, right, Dave? Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, the trend today is, is to incorporate this, uh, rod if you will mm -hmm. uh, with an aquarium controller that can be programmed to maintain that water temperature but the rod yeah, doesn't it's not just the rod right now we're going right. back to a hybrid of the two which means mm -hmm. go to the temperature heater with a thermostat yep. in addition to the controller right yes yep okay For and the, what does that do yep. explain to me how does that work so, so basically, you, you, you're using your controller, uh, for instance, Hydros, to control via its uh, temperature probe the uh, temperature and the on-off cycles of your uh, heater element. Okay. And then you can have a backup to that by having the uh, temperature probe or a heater element that has the thermostat built into it as well set that temperature higher which temperature the thermostat which, or the controller 
the thermostat okay. on the heater. Right. Okay. So for instance, let's say you're shooting for 79 and mm-hmm. you let hydros take control of that. 78, 79 is kind of the on off points. Mm-hmm. But as a backup, have that heater with the thermostat built in to 82. So mm. now say something happens with hydros and, or even the heater element, you have a fallback that if it's stuck on, it will turn off at 82 without frying, ah. you know, cooking your tank. We talked about this at the beginning of the episode is, you know, you're relying on a $20 thermostat relay. Mm-hmm. What makes it okay now? And it didn't make it okay back in those days at the beginning. What's the difference, Dave? Well, you're not banging on that that thermostat of that $20 heater as your primary on off. It's uh, the relays it's- that we've incorporated in the hydros can really withstand thousands of on off cycles. So okay. with this little $20, $30 heater, you really don't know what you're getting, you know, in terms of longevity with that thermostat. You have a, so, you have an X number of cycles. And after that correct. X number of cycles, there's a, there's a limited life after that yeah. X number of on and off cycles, it fails. So the yeah. least, the fewer times you, you, you create, you use that cycle, then mm-hmm. The reliability will stand, will, will, will be extended. I get that now. I get it now. So, all right. Now I do see online, there's a trend of people that are using the heater as, as, or the heater thermostat as the primary and the hydros or the aquarium controller as the secondary. And that's perfectly fine, especially nowadays with, uh, you know, heater controllers like Inkbird to mm-hmm. use high quality relays. But, I, but here's the drawback on that. And the drawback is that a lot of the aquarium controllers, including hydros, have power monitoring, which means that yeah. if the aquarium controller, when the, when the heater is on, let's say a heater is 300 watts, the aquarium controller mm-hmm. will monitor and ensure that if the heater is supposed to be on, is it drawing 300 watts? And if it isn't, then let us know because yeah. then most likely the heating element has, has failed. But that relies right. on the aquarium controller knowing exactly when the heater is supposed to be on and when the heater is supposed to be off, which it cannot do if the primary controller is the heater's thermostat. Mm-hmm. Because the heater's thermostat is making that decision and not relaying that decision to the aquarium controller, which is the hydros. Hey, mm-hmm. the heater's supposed to be on. Hey, the heater's supposed to be off. It doesn't know. So the hydros, right. the hydros might see the heater as not drawing any power, but the ink bird knows that the heater, the temperature is fine. So I don't turn the heater on. Therefore you may have a, what we call a false positive, which is the hydros is expecting the heater to draw 300, but it doesn't. Mm -hmm. So while using the thermostat as primary and the controller as secondary, you are really giving up. You're really forfeiting one of the biggest benefits of having an Mm -hmm. aquarium controller, which is not only to control the heater, but also to monitor its power consumption. So you know when it, when it works or not, because you have a heater that can cook your tank, but at the same time, if the heater is not working, you'll have a very cold tank, which will render the same problem. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, You know, the controller is trying to turn the heater on and the temperature keeps dropping. Then let me know because then there's something going on. Okay. Yeah. So the moral of the story for this very short episode is that, you know, don't connect your heaters to a, um, you know, the heating element without a thermostat. Thanks everybody for watching. And if you have any questions about this episode or anything, just head on over to support at coralview.com and one of the texts there is going to be able to help you. Otherwise, head on over to Facebook and we have several Facebook groups where people are always willing to help. Thank you again for watching and we'll see you next time.